So the skeleton warriors have been deployed next to the portal. And they must locate the child and move back to the portal to win the game. Now I'm going to deploy the mercenaries in the village and we are going to do that randomly from the center of the table. It's going to say the center of the table is right here where this mark is. They're going to be deployed one long a random direction. I'm going to use my handy dandy directional dice and I'm just going to be putting them out randomly. There. Oh, he's going to be right in the face of the uh, skeleton warriors. The mercenaries got pretty good distribution, distributed nice and evenly. So they are covering. The three objective markers. Remember, the skeleton warriors are looking for the objective marker with the number one on it. So here we go. We're going to roll for initiative. And whenever you guys see the red die, the red die represents the skeleton warriors. All right, the mercenaries have the initiative. So we are going to start with Marthan she's got one failure they're going to Skeleton Warrior is going to take that and activate with it he's going to move into combat with her the Skeleton Warrior wins the bout with a six on Marthan has a five. So she is not prone. You run a my power. Our fan will receive her activation token. And then we will go on to the next militia member, which is going to be Paul the Archer or Crossbowman. He's going to roll two dice for activation. Nice. He's going to do a power shot. At, uh, the skeleton warrior down there in the center. If you guys can see him. Let's see. The Paul the Archer has a combat of four versus combat of two. That is a win for. The archer, and I keep calling him Archer Crossbowman. He knocks him prone. So actually, the skeleton warrior has block. So I need to roll to see if he is going to be able to continue to stand. He needs a four or lessen the blow uh, by rolling a five or six. Oh, cock die, guys, cock dice. So we're gonna re-roll that. It was almost a six. Oh, it's a four, it's a four. He remains on the ground. Block did not pay off this time. So now he gets that. He needs, also gets, we're gonna use this little pointer here for the um, reload token. So just to make sure I remember he needs to reload. Okay, next we are going to activate, this is Megus. He has quality of two. All right, double success. He's going to move in towards the zombie or the skeleton warriors, it's one. And he's going to end his movement right here. He takes a, takes 
that. We're going to activate the leader here with the quality of, this is Eric, their leader. He has a quality of three. Ooh, double fail. So that is going to be the initiative swinging over to the skeleton warriors. Let me clear these up. Use this marker here to for you guys and myself to remind me if it's the attackers or the defenders, with the defenders being the militiamen, of course. All right, so we're going to start with the skeleton holding his sword up and then see what he gets. Quality three. Oh, one fail, one success. And with the success, we are going to give it to Marthan. She's going to stand up. Now this skeleton warrior will, instead of charging into combat, he's going to play the smarter move and run this way to possibly block line of sight and make an advance towards the objective off to the right of the table, which is there. All right, that's his action. Let me put that there so I know that he activated. And next skeleton warrior will be the flaming skeleton, needing a, I believe it's three as well. Nope, he needs a four. Flaming skeleton needs a, needs a four quality. Double fail. Initiative passes back to the militiamen. And we are going to start with the crossbowman. He's going to try to, he's going to roll two dice to see if he can reload and take another shot. He rolls double sixes. There we go. He's going to reload with the first action. And then the second action, he is going to fire at the prone skeleton warrior here. If you guys can see him both in the shot here. There we go. Skeleton warrior takes a negative one. That's nine versus a six, uh, five. So he is killed. <laughs> and that's the first kill of the game. Remember the mercenaries need to kill at least four of the models from the Skeleton Warriors Warband. So they've got the first one down. All Skeleton Warriors have to do is get to the objective and then get them back to the portal to take them to, to take the boy to the the necromancer or the evil lord, whoever their leader is. All right, so she will get an activation token. And we are going to, Marthan is still in combat, so we are going to. It's a five and a four. Martha wins that one with her three combat. He's going to, she's going to uh, push him back. <laughs> on this one. They're keeping him at bay. Uh, the Migas, the retired soldier, which is the, which is the guy here. Let's see if you guys can catch him. There he is, holding the torch up. Well, they're both holding torches up. The gentleman here holding the torch up. Four, uh, it's got a quality of four plus. I'm gonna roll this one in my makeshift dice tray. All right, that's one activation, one fail. Um, he, let's see who we're going to react with. Let's be smart for the skeleton warriors and the skeleton warrior here will move out. Now, Migas will, uh, he will move in towards the, let's see, the 
Uh, he can really catch anybody. We're going to say he can't get this guy because he'll have to cut through the terrain here. So he's just going to run forward, go into base contact with the spiders. So that'll be an easy kill if he can pull it off, obviously. So the spiders, the spider swarm has a combat of one. This should be an easy win for Megas because he has a combat of four. And that definitely, that's a nine versus a three. So that is a gruesome kill. Which I don't think they can do gruesome kill. And since there are a swarm, they don't get gruesome kills, but they are definitely dead. Let's give Megas his activation token. Let's activate some of these. Let's activate Pup back here. Pup needing a. He's got a quality of four. Might be a little risky. I might need to save him for last. Let's save Pup for last. Let's act. Let's actually activate the leader. Who needs who has a quality of three it's one success one failure let's see the skeletons need to be wise here and try to capitalize on this failure the skeleton here i may have already activated with him this turn i can't remember if i activated with him this turn but we're going to activate with him again so here he's all he's so close he's that close maybe one more move to the objective here now the leader needs to act quickly and he does not have any range weapons but he's going to try to cut the skeleton warrior off here he can't really he can get in front of him but he cannot block him unfortunately or get into base contact with him because the tree is somewhat in the way. So he stay. So the leader dashes from behind the tree and startles the skeleton warrior. He says to him, you shall not pass. All right, that is his activation there. Pup needing a four based on his quality. Pup going to roll, going to roll three dice for Pup, since he is the last one in the militia to activate. Pup rolls only one success, so the turn is, would be going over anyway. So Pup is going to at least activate, so he can chase down the skeleton warrior heading for that objective. So Pup. Will All right, that's Pup's action. And now we will flip this over to the skeletons. Or the attackers, as I should refer to them as. Because not everyone in this warband is a skeleton. All right. So let's start with the first skeleton here. It's going to roll two. See if he can get in contact with that objective oh there we go he has two success there he's going to oh yeah that's definitely he's going to go straight to that with one action then he's going to flip it over with the second action not the objective they're looking for unfortunately so this is not the objective the young boy is not here so now the Skeleton Warriors will have to continue on. Let's give him his activation token. And let's see, who are we going to activate? Let's try to, let's activate the flaming skeleton here. He's not done really anything this turn or this game. So he has a quality of four. So he's gonna roll two dice. And double fail, they did not need that. So 
initiative is going to flip back over to the militia. And we are going to start with the crossbowman here. Or, the, yep, the, um, he is going to roll two, only three. It's one success, one fail. Hmm. I think the flame demon is going to move into combat, so he is not under any pressure there. All right, now with really only one target to aim for, he's got line of sight. His that friendly is not blocking line of sight from the archer to the skeleton warrior. So let's roll this combat up. We've got a combat of four versus, a, oh, I'm sorry, a combat of, yes, a combat of four versus a combat of two. Oh, not good enough. Well, actually, yes it is. So that's six and it's five. So just barely beats him positive. So he's going to knock this Skeleton Warrior down. Oh, actually, Skeleton Warrior has block. Let's uh, let's see if block works. The, the the crossbowman has perfect shot, I believe, or good shot, I should say. Skeleton Warrior will roll for block, so we can stand him up. He fails block, and we're going to give that and that. All right, so who else do we have? We've got pretty much anyone to activate here. Let's activate the leader so we can actually see what's gonna happen with this combat here. Leader activating on a quality of three. That's one success, one failure. This. You know what, we're gonna be smart. And this skeleton warrior back here is just gonna be the runner. He's going to, again, try to move on to the next objective. And now we're going to, oh, he's not really in base contact with him. So he's just going to move to kind of stop him moving into base contact. Okay, next up, we're going to go with, let's go with Marthan, leading threes. All right, double six. She's going to move into base contact and fight the prone skeleton warrior. All right, that's a six for her and a five for the skeleton warrior. Skeleton warriors, that's four for the skeleton warrior. So the Skeleton Warrior is knocked out. Since they're in combat, let's roll for Formigas. Quality of four. The, uh, I'm saying quality of, not quality of four, he's got a quality of two. So quality of two, he rolls double success. He's gonna do a power shot or a power blue on the skeleton warrior, the flaming skeleton. So Migus wins this combat. And he pushes him prone. There should have been a rule to push them back into the portal, but there's not. All right. Pup activates on the call of quality of four. One failure, one success. We are going to have the flaming skeleton. She can't cast a spell. I don't think she can with one action at least. Um, he is going to try to. He's going to move past these two. Try 
try to put some distance. They've got to cover some ground. One more kill from a, uh, one more kill to the Skeleton Warriors and the game is over. So our pup has his action he needs to complete. He's just going to move in base contact with the Skeleton Warrior. And that is the end of the turn for the Militia. They did really good that turn. No turnovers. And the Skeleton Warriors are nowhere near any of the, object the other two objectives. So we're looking pretty good. So we're going to start with the Flaming Skeleton here. Only four. That's one success, one failure. And we are going to move Marthan. She's going to turn around and jump onto his back, stopping him from escaping or getting any further into the village. And so now the, since it was his action, he's just going to go into combat with her. He should be able to take her down. Flaming Skeleton with the combat of four versus her combat of three. Oh! That result, the Flaming Skeleton knocks Marthan down. It's his token. Keep that moving. Okay. Let's see here. Now we need to some combat here. This Skeleton Warrior will try to activate. One success, one failure. Um, the leader here will attack the skeleton warrior. Okay, so leader with the combat of three, skeleton warrior with the combat of two. Oh, that's what I needed. The sweet but taste of victory. When the game by taking out that zombie there, our skeleton warrior. And so the militiamen have won the day. They've killed four of the units, which means that was 70% of their starting army. Looking back at the scenario, I think I may have given the militia too much of an advantage. Um, like maybe the zombies or the I keep calling them zombies the skeleton warriors should have just freely got the initiative to start the game or even um push them out a little bit more from the portal i'll uh give this game some thought and then i will come back to it maybe adjust the scenario slightly guys that's the end of the video if you enjoyed this battle report let me know by liking the video and subscribing and if you've got any comments, make sure you leave them down in the comment section. Guys, forgive me if I forgot any rules or got anything wrong, uh, but I had a blast playing this game and I'm looking forward to doing more of the same. Guys, I'll see you again tomorrow.